Hello and welcome to my seventh lecture in organic chemistry, polymers. Polymers are macromolecules. They can either be naturally occurring or synthetically made. They're comprised of repeated subunits of smaller molecules we call monomers. Many people use the expression polymer and plastic interchangeably. Uh, and indeed, plastics are polymers. However, polymers are a very much larger class of molecule. They include plastics, but they also include things like natural rubber, proteins, and DNA. When monomer units polymerize, they're joined by covalent bonds. And in this course, we're responsible for two broad classes of polymers, addition polymers, and condensation polymers. Addition polymerization reaction, typically the monomer or building blocks for any addition polymer is some derivative of ethene. And I've mentioned this previously, ethene is incredibly valuable in terms of industrial processes. And this is what I was referring to. As we've also uh, already seen, unsaturated hydrocarbons like alkenes undergo a rapid addition reaction uh, under appropriate catalytic conditions. What happens is the double bond is converted into a single bond and either an atom or a small molecule is added on both sides of the double bond. If we adjust the conditions, we can make monomers build very long chains of addition polymers. Literally thousands upon thousands of polymer units can be attached end to end in this fashion. So therefore, by way of definition, addition polymerization is a process in which small molecules called monomers combine repeatedly to produce a very long chain-like molecule called a polymer. So here's our first example then. We're polymerizing ethene into polyethene, also known as polyethylene. So we're talking grocery bags here. Here's our monomer unit, ethene, in brackets, and a subscript N, meaning a tremendous number of these molecules. And we set conditions for an addition polymerization to occur, and we get a very long chain of ethene, ethene, ethene. You'll notice that the double bond in each case has been converted into a single bond as these molecules are attached end to end. And that's typical for a well, it's typical for an addition reaction, it's typical for an addition polymer as well. Perhaps somewhat surprisingly, the name of the polymer is polyethene. Uh, and I say somewhat surprising because there's no double bonding left in the, the polymer. It's all been opened up into single bonds. However, the name of the polymer derives from the name of its monomer, its original monomer unit. It gives us some sense of uh, the building block for the material. So it's a bit surprising, but keep it in mind going forward. Here's a second polymerization of propene into polypropene, also known as polypropylene. So this is the harder plastic. I think plastic furniture, pails, buckets, kitty litters, those sorts of things. Here's our monomer, propene, and there's a tremendous amount of it. We polymerize and give rise to polypropene. And you'll notice that the the methyl group that does not participate in the double bond comes off as a side chain. <clears throat> so these truly are addition reactions across the double bond, across the double bond, across the double bond. And um, you end up getting a, a side chain like this. This is typical for many polymers. And we'll see in the next example um, a similar pattern as well. Polymerization of chloroethene into polychloroethene, also known as polyvinyl chloride or PVC. So this is the black plastic that you see in drain pipes and, and sewer systems. Here's our monomer, chloroethene. We have a, a, a quantity of it. We polymerize it and we get polychloroethene. And again, the monomer units are attached across the double bond and the chlorine is a side attachment on every second carbon. <clears throat> dot, 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 dot means this is a very long molecule. Finally, in terms of addition polymers, the polymerization of phenylethene into polyphenylethene. 
formerly known as polystyrene. Commercially, this material is known as, of course, styrofoam. So here's our monomer unit. Here's our ethene, and here's our benzene ring, our phenyl side chain. We have a quantity of it, and we polymerize it to get polyphenyl ethene. And you'll notice there's a benzyl group, or other phenyl group, a benzene ring, attached to every second carbon. Oh, dot, 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 of course. These are very long molecules. Condensation polymerization reactions. Um, we've seen condensation reactions before. Typically, there's a secondary end product, something like water or perhaps a hydrogen halide is eliminated when two monomer units um, polymerize. Again, very long chain polymers can be formed through the repeated elimination of this small secondary molecule. Condensation polymers are both naturally occurring and uh, produced through a manufactured process. There's a tremendous variety of them. Polyesters are condensation polymers. And we talked about esters previously. An ester is formed when water is eliminated from a reaction between an acid and an alcohol. Well, if you have a diacid, which has got carboxylic groups at both ends, and a dialcohol, which has got hydroxyl groups at both ends, I think you can see that you probably clip a diacid together with a dialcohol to reach with a diacid with a dialcohol, and so on and so on. Really in, in uh, very, very, very long chains. And in each case, every time you have an esterification between two of these monomers, you eliminate a water molecule. So here we're looking at the polymerization of ethane 1,2-diol with a diacid. And I won't give you the name of the diacid because, frankly, you're not responsible for the names of, of diacids. So here's our ethane 1,2-diol, two carbons, two hydroxyl groups. Here's our diacid in the middle. There's our first carboxylic group and our second carboxylic group. And again, here's ethane 1,2-diol. <clears throat> Water comes off here, and water comes off here. So we're going to have an ester linkage uh, in both places, both here and here. And in fact, here's our end products right here. Here's our first ester linkage. Here's our second ester linkage, and water comes off here. And again, this should be dot, 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 dot. This molecule extends for many, many hundreds of monomers. In fact, this water probably should be in brackets with a subscript N, indicating a tremendous amount of water comes off. So those are the two broad categories of polymerizations you're responsible for. Um, there's, uh, practice makes uh, perfect. I recommend that you, um, you take up your homework in this area. I think I have one review question, but um, it's really hard to anticipate what sort of uh, polymerization questions they would ask you on either an exam or a diploma. This, however, is, has become sort of a favorite unit in more recent diploma exams. Here we have an addition polymer, and they want to know what the monomer unit is. So they want you to work back from the polymer to the monomer. And the way to do this is relatively straightforward. Draw a couple of lines separating a two-carbon unit. And keep in mind that our monomers typically have two carbons in them. They're derivatives of ethene. So here I've se se uh, separated a two-carbon unit from the rest of the polymer and draw a double line where the single line exists between the two carbons. And that is, in fact, your monomer. In this case, it's 1,1,2,2-tetrafluoroethene. And let's see if that's one of our choices. In fact, that's choice A. 1,1,2,2-tetrafluoroethene is the monomer unit that gave rise to this polymer. Commercially, this polymer is known as Teflon. Uh, that concludes the lecture. I hope you found it of some value. We'll see you next time when we talk about um, the oil and gas industry, fractional distillation, and various separation techniques they use to treat the, uh, uh, the, the bunker oil or the raw oil or the bitumen coming out of the ground. Thank you very much.